Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro where we continue our dive into APT by looking at working with profiles. This will cover why you might want multiple profiles, how to create new profiles and how to manage them. So let's get straight into it. So what are a few of the reasons you might need to have multiple profiles? Well the first one is if you're using different gear and different setups. Um, if you run with exactly the same gear every time and you're not planning or you don't think you'll be changing in the future you can get away with a single profile. If you're using a Canon or Nikon with camera lenses that report the focal length to the camera you can get away with that too as a single profile. But even with them I do recommend setting up one generic profile and creating a new one for the gear you actually use on a new profile. But other things like your scope's focal length, um, that's a big one if you change that and forget to change your settings in your object browser. Uh, plate solving will fail, which of course will lead to automatic meridian flips failing, etc. Um, you, know, you might have different types of cameras, and I'm not just talking um, CMOS cameras and DSLRs, but if you have a mono and a one-shot color CMOS, setting up separate profiles is a very good idea. But uh, they're just a couple of the reasons there for the different gear you might be using. Uh, Multi-camera imaging, if you want to use multiple cameras, say piggybacking a DSLR on the top of your scope, then you need to make separate profiles for each camera to let it get it to work. And lastly, it's a speed and convenience. Um, with separate profiles, all you need to do is set up your gear, select the profile that's appropriate for it, and away you go. Rather than having to remember what you need to change in each profile to work with the gear you currently have set up. But what I do is I create a generic profile that's not equipment dependent. Uh, you'll have things like your location, etc. set. And then you can use that to create the other profiles you want. So I'm going to get in now and do my generic setup and we'll see how that goes. So here I am with APT started using its uh, default general profile and in this I'm going to create a generic profile that is not reliant on any gear to be connected. It's just going to cover the things that's going to be common across all of my uh, profiles. So first off uh, go into the tools tab and we'll go into the settings here and it's just a case of running through the settings and picking out what you want um, the default paths and everything else you can set all that uh, I'll go into my file grouping um, object name I use and the camera name I use and the focal lengths so they're the ones I use um, object name I move that up uh, focal lengths I'll move that up and that so that's my path to my files so I'll have the object name the date the images were taken the focal length and the camera used so I can have that so I'm happy with that and the name parts as well this is the actual file names um, I use the long file name for the plan type um, I used to use the short but I prefer the long now filter image ID I put that right down the bottom uh, exposure I put that up ISO bin now what else did I want from over here uh, to do, do, do CCD gain put that over there and that's about it that I need I use in that uh, up 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 and exposure I put that up as well so that's how my images are named um, so I know what's going on with them uh, do I want that up higher yes I want that up higher object name should come before it so that's that set up that's a something you can use in all of them um, if you want to you can put your observer name I'm not going to put mine in there not right now uh, live view automation this only works with your um, DSLR so I can set that up and it works out that if you don't have a DSLR connected it won't do anything to interfere with it so uh, 6400 for live view automation with 6400 or 3200 oh, 64 I'll leave it at that for now um, there's nothing else in here I'm going to change 
at this time. Uh, you don't have to worry about CCD, not worrying about that. Temperature and sky, you can do anything you need to do in here if you have equipment you're going to be using. If you have a sensor for your sky quality, you can set all that up. Uh, I don't, so I'm going to leave that. The next one is location. Um, I'm in the southern hemisphere, auto on the daylight savings, and I'll go down to 20 because this is going to be not home. This will be close to home, but not too close. I don't want just knocking on my front door. Uh, minus 36 will do for my location, and 151. Uh, elevation, uh, 25 meters will do. My time zone is plus 10, so a 10 there, and I use an offset. Don't worry too much about the details of these settings and that I'm using. Um, I'll be going through them more in other videos, but this is just quickly to run through what it does. Uh, export coordinates. Um, I'm going to set export the time, but I'm having problems with that at the moment. I don't know why. Uh, scope and focuser. Now, if you only have one mount, you can uh, set this up to do that. Um, so you can do that. There are some I'll do anyway. Auto hide the meridian clock. Uh, above horizon check, I enable that. Uh, low level pause, I use three seconds. I don't bother changing the scope speeds. You can put the scope, the mount name in here if you like. Uh, as I have different mounts, I'm not going to set that in there now. And mount tracking watchdog. If you have an off access guider, you might want to do the pause gu guiding on f focus and move. Um, but that is becomes more equipment defender dependent. Uh, filter wheels, we're not going to touch that. Sound. No, don't need to worry about that. Um, okay, if you're using a planetarium, I use Stellarium. I'll set that up to work there. And in the advance, there are a couple you may want to do here. Um, you don't need to really do anything on the left unless you want to. But on the right hand side, I enable advanced flats and biased. I leave on the auto connect DSLR because if you haven't got a DSLR, it's not going to matter anyway. Um, the rest of these are up to you. Um, I have don't remember object name. I like to put the object name in myself or when I select it from the object browser. Um, no, no, no. Uh, one thing you want to turn off, especially if you're using a DSLR with a telescope, is turn off determine lens focal length. If you're using a camera lens with it and it reports the focal length, that's fine. Uh, but the moment you change to a telescope, that's not what you want. I don't have a Nikon, so I don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to disable keys thingy. So I click OK on that. And there we go. That's done. And now the next one you might want to look at is go to your gear tab. Uh, you might want to set up point craft now. And go into the settings. Uh, set up your plate solving software. Uh, program files as tab, yes. Uh, oops, Astro Tools Plate Solve 2, set up Plate Solve 3. I've got my camera connected in case you can't tell. <laughs> uh, and lastly, a All Sky Plate Solver. Now, it's an interesting one, it's in the uh, program files x86 and it uses a nice little name called Plate Solver. So that's where you'll find that. Um, I use ASTAP for both of mine at the moment. Um, I used to use PS3, but the latest version of ASTAP seems to be very good for plate solving. Uh, for my auto, I always use near solving. Now, plate solving timeout, I set that at 30 seconds. I could probably go lower. If it's going to plate solve, it'll generally do it in 3 or 4 seconds at the most. Uh, go to attempts, I leave that. Uh, acceptable error. Um, you can change this, depends on what mount you're using. I put it at 15. Uh, make relative moves, no other things. Flip directions, um, that's okay. It depends on the gear you're using. You need to know your gear you're using, especially things like flip direction. Um, that's to do when you use the aim button in plate solving. Some mounts, when you use the aim, the mount will move in the wrong direction, so you might want to check that if yours does that. Now your exposure settings, this is only relevant to the particular camera that's connected, so you can set this up 
as part of your default um, my default is five seconds you can do it quicker depending on what you actually I'll go for three seconds now I'll leave it on five bugger it uh, default go to filter when I've got it will be one uh, my go to building bidding binning will be sorry four by four um, so this is being set up basically for when I'm using my 294mm um, default go to gain I'll leave that at 120 uh, yes if I got a DSLR I want to use that um, if you're using things in L mode or, or RAW plus um, your, Im your JPEG images and you're not using full size images you may need to check that one unstretch and default go to ISO for plate solving is 6400 there so that's all that set up so that's just you know general it's going to be used with all profiles so that's good uh, object browser this is one that some people probably wouldn't think of but uh, I set an altitude filter and I set it at 10 that's just the way I work um, I like to see what's coming up that I'm going to be imaging in the near future I use the extended list um, so that's done the stars it's the same sort of thing show the extended list don't need to worry about maps um, it will automatically fix itself up uh, custom again the altitude filter is set and same with the to-do list the altitude filter so that's all set there and just click OK on that um, as we work through so you don't need to worry about you might want to worry about your guiding um, settings now even if you don't have a guide camera and you're not using guide cam guiding you will need to come in here anyway and set it up but I use guiding um, I dither in on dithering distance I'm going to set that at three for now that'll cover most of it uh, 1.0 for the stability settle time timeout uh, 30 seconds I actually went through my log files and worked out how long a dithering takes from the end of one image to the start of the next uh, for mine with my normal gear it takes about on average about 21 and a half seconds with a minimum of about 17 seconds and a maximum of about 27 so basically if dithering isn't finished in that time it's not doing very good in the first place um, I don't use auto exposure cancel at the moment I will get into that later uh, the graph metrics arc seconds is always the best the scale you can pick what you need I leave it at four uh, I find that works for me this isn't for multi-camera so I don't need to worry about that uh, I do want APT to control guiding and it's auto delay I set this down to about seven seconds uh, that's just me I'll get like I said I'll go into all these settings more later when I do them do them individually in my uh, user guide ones so that's guiding done um, you don't need to worry, worry about anything else um, in there uh, under tools now if you're using a flat panel of some sort uh, you can set that up in here I need to set mine up I've never actually used one I only got it the other week I haven't had a chance to set it up but I also need to go through and, and set up all my filters for it and I've realized that the way this works um, if I'm not using filters it will use the first setting so I have to go out and actually move my filters around and I don't want it to try and do uh, the flats using a HA 3 nanometer HA so you can set that up in there if you've got one to use I'm gonna to have to do that later uh, when I get round to trying it out I haven't tried it at all yet that'll be interesting and the other thing you might want to do is session craft go in and set up your flip settings um, I'm gonna put mine in here please don't use these unless you know what you're doing beforehand uh, otherwise you could end up damaging your gear I use minus 12 so I'm actually flipping 12 seconds uh, 12 minutes after the um, meridian passes I have a two minute delay so that I, I set up my mounts for its mount limits to be in that period where it's waiting 
um, delay is counted you need to turn that off for this one I don't use blind solving I use just normal solving and force flip by a go to could be a uh, good one to have going so that's set up and I'll actually turn that on yes and that's it don't need to worry about these that's all equipment dependent um, so what else might I need to change um, you might want to set up your focus craft to work with your calculations and everything um, you don't need to um, I do but in the settings I use inverse power saves a lot of hard work because what and it's also quicker while you're imaging so I'll set that up as default so that'll be on um, now the other thing you might need to set up is your data craft um, I'm gonna have to pause this for a minute because I need to put my external drive in so it uh, copies everything to my external drive to set that up so I will pause this right now and come back in a couple of minutes sorry about that but now it's done I can set up data craft so into data craft um, excuse me I'm going into settings uh, destination path that's going to be my 128 gig external drive uh, real-time mode uh, skip thumbnails skip shoot images uh, I make it a true mirror and build an image database um, the custom database path um, you can set that in a location that's not the default it comes in handy if you're copying uh, to a different computer to do your photo ed ed editing so I'm going to copy it into my APT image folder so there we go auto copy it to the destination as well yes and click OK and I can set that on to activated now and that's all that matters and that's data craft done so I can shut that down um, and really except for maybe if you have a web camera for monitoring your gear outside you might want to set that up as well um, I will eventually have one but at the moment I don't use it so I don't set that up and that's it for the default profile um, as I said it's not dependent on any equipment you're using so it's all good there and next we'll just move on to creating new profiles and uh, managing them so we'll be right back in a second okay so now we're going to get on to the creation and management of profiles uh, for that you need to go into your settings and while I'm here I did forget to do one setting I want for the default and that's to show the location name in the main screen and I'll save that it's simply it'll be up there when you when you start a new profile or when you restart APT and um, it just lets me know at a glance that I've got my location set correctly uh, back to the main window and this is where you're going to um, do your management for your profiles now the first thing I want to do okay I'm going to create four base profiles uh, I'll have one for a DSLR with lenses um, which will be a profile that will not get changed once it's configured uh, a DSLR with a telescope um, a, D a CMOS camera a monochrome one and a one-shot color one as well so I need the four to be able to and the three except for the DSLR with lens the three of the others will all form bases for other profiles I'll create from them uh, for various telescopes and, and settings I might have for it so away we go first of all you need to go to manage okay we're going to create new profiles so first one I'm going to do is DSLR lens and that'll be just for my DSLRs with lenses okay okay it's been created next I'll go back in I want to create another one uh, DSLR scope and that'll be the base for any I'm using my DSLR with a telescope on create that one okay back into manage again uh, this will be um, 
CMOS uh, monos, so that'll be a profile for my monochrome cameras. Click OK, created, and last but not least is CMOS OSC. So that's done there. Okay, now in your manage. Um, like I said, you've got to create new profiles. You can rename the general profile or the currently active profile. You can rename it. Uh, you can overwrite the currently active one with a different profile. Um, if I click on that, you'll see I've got the list of profiles. You can overwrite it if you want. And you can delete various profiles. So that's what you do in the management tab. And I'm going to click cancel because I don't want to do any of that. Um, okay. Now the other thing you want with management is your backup settings and restore settings. Now backup comes in two flavours. You have your main settings only, which is all your just general settings. Um, in your settings here, as well as your Meridian flips, etc. and things like that, you can back them up. Or you can do a master backup. And what this does, it does the general settings, um, plus it does your um, custom objects. It will back them up your to-do list it'll back that up and your checklist over here it will do them as well if you want to do that so it's up to you which one you do um, just for now I'm not going to bother with the others I'll just do a backup of these this particular one um, and click OK you can pick where you want to put it I'll just put it in the, the um, main directory and I'll just call this default config so that I can back this up whenever I want to um, and reinstall it if I need to so I'll save on that so the settings were backed up now restore settings um, just be warned make sure you're in the profile you want to restore it to otherwise it will overrate it so I'm just going to click yes at the moment because I'm not going to do it um, APT automatically creates different restores so when you've been using it for a little while you'll have a list of different restore points in here um, that you can choose from but this one right there, this one here will be actually be right at the bottom here and that's for opening the file we just created so you can click OK select the file you want to overwrite this one with and then click open I'm not going to do it because it's exactly the same as what we've already got anyway and that's done for managing your um, profiles now the next time you start APT it will actually have a drop-down list um, by default you have a five second delay um, which is down here for the selection um, you can change that if you wish and also if you click on the drop-down list it will stop the countdown as well so that gives you an option there um, I'm going to be restarting in a minute to get into my DSLR setup one so I will do that now because that's all the management and we'll just do a quick run through of setting up one of the extra profiles so I'll be right back with that one okay so now I've shut down APT and I'm going to start it again and you'll see the new startup so double click on the icon and as you see I've got the new drop down list here um, clicking on the list stops the timer if you don't click on the list anywhere or click OK after your timer countdown it will launch the last uh, profile that you used so I'm going to be doing my DSLR with lens this time now this is the simplest and easiest configuration you you can set up um, because it, basically once it's set up APT will automatically do what it needs to do so for that one I'm not even going to hold down shift I've got my 1100D plugged in and APT will automatically find it because I have it set to automatically connect to DSLR so we'll go through that one okay um, no I don't want to open on start so okay I should have set that one in the default <laughs> um, the new version is out for those with a key and we're supporting APT via that way um, I'm going to click ignore for now simply because I've already downloaded it and I'll install it once the sky is clear here and it's not looking good for the new moon for me at the moment so ignore that version 
Okay, as you can see, I now have the profile name and my location up here. So I can just quickly glance up there and say, hey, I'm in the wrong location. I better change it. Now what I need for this one is the first thing I'll start with is down here for the destination. I don't save them at all to my camera. I save them directly to the PC and don't worry about it. Um, really there's nothing else you need to change down here unless you really want to. Um, Anti-vibration pause, that's your mirror lockup. And really unless you're taking sub two or three second uh, images, you don't want to use that anyway. So I'd just leave it as it is. And if you're shooting in RAW, uh, my quality is generally always RAW, but for shoot ones, I generally have it on L. Um, so you can change anything you need to there if you want to. Uh, in the gear tab, there's nothing to change there except for your scope. So I'm going to connect my scope now. Um, so click on connect scope, select it from the profile, and of course that's... Uh, your mount you're using it's all mine's all configured properly click OK there you go it's now connected to my mount and now by default it will connect to this mount every time I start this profile uh, then we want to go into tools and back into your settings again and what we need to do here is, um, is the only thing you really need to change in here um, well, I've got the scope set up haven't I yes so that's I don't have to worry about that. Uh, go into your advanced, and for this setup, by checking the um, determine focal length, as long as you have a lens that reports the focal length to APT, the first time you take an image, it will automatically set your focal length in your object calculator here, so you don't have to worry about it. And of course the pixels and, and micron size, DSLR you don't have to set that, it gets it automatically from the camera as well. So that's it done. Now the first time, see I'm getting this message down here about UTC time, I'll have to work with Ivo and, and EQ Mod to work out why that's going on, but yeah. But that's it, that's the simplest setup you can get is a DSLR with a lens. Um, if you have guiding and everything else that's fine um, but the DSLR and lens is the simplest one because no matter if you change the lens and it reports the focal length APT will work with it plate solving will work with it etc 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 so for now just to show you how this goes um, I'll go back to cam I'll set a one second exposure um, just to show you how this works down here and I click shoot so it's taking an image at the moment uh, I've got it in the bedroom with the uh, it's got its cover on and everything it's the middle of the day here and as you see it changed it to the 300 mil for my one that I'm using now if I change the scope if I add a uh, teleconverter it will get that right um, if I use a zoom lens it'll get it right um, just one thing is when you're shooting and saving things um, because I've got it set not to save shoot ones it's not going to come up but um, it will come up and tell you that the focal length is is different um, it doesn't do it in here but it will tell you that your focal length down here you'll see it when you take an image will be different if you're using a teleconverter um, it will tell you the default focal length of the lens rather than the teleconverted ones but that doesn't matter it's what's in here that matters the most so if I put my 1.4 teleconverter on here it'll actually show it at 420 and that's the one that matters not what you're getting down here um, so that's up to you and that's it all done I am set up to now with this profile to use my DSLR I don't have to worry about changing anything else because it's all done already um, the only thing I'll have to do later on is come in with my extra devices and configure my uh, flat panel device. Um, Pegasus Astro. That's what I'll be using, but uh, I'll need to configure that later because, I had, as I said before, I haven't used it yet. But that's it about setting up uh, various profiles. Any questions, just ask away. If you have any problems, visit the APT forums. Everyone over there will be quite happy to help you out. So. I'll end this video now, it's got long enough, 
and I wish you clear skies and I will see you in the next video. Bye.